This is the Beef Podcast, presented by Beefy Marketing. Oh yeah, y'all. Welcome back to another episode of The Beef. I'm your host, as always, John Kelly, a.k.a. John the Marketer on Instagram. I can't thank you enough for tuning in to another episode of The Beef Podcast, and I'm so excited to announce that we have Anthony with Fly Through It Group on the podcast today. Anthony, welcome to the show, man. Hey, thanks for having me, dude. It's a, it's a pleasure, as always. I'm pretty interested to learn about your company. This is one that rarely for me, I, it doesn't happen often, but I'm walking into this blind. I'll say flying through it blind. Um, John gave me a quick update on who you were and why he wanted to have you on the show, but this isn't my episode that I cultivated my relationship that I made or anything. So we've never met until today. And uh, I'm excited to learn what you do and what you have to offer. But as always, we start off with an icebreaker question on the Beef Podcast every single episode. So today's is, if you could have someone follow you around all the time, think like a personal assistant, what would you have them do? Man, that's not an easy icebreaker. Question. <laughs> some of them are. Some of them a little are. bit of thought. I know. <laughs> so for me, I, man, this is a debate. Like, I don't know what I would do because there's so many little tasks in my life that it's not that I, I don't want to handle because my life is pretty exciting and fun most of the time. Like there's a lot of cool stuff to do and it's just a, a it's like, do I want to take away my home responsibilities of, you know, cleaning the house and cleaning up after we have a party or, you know, those types of things. But I think probably the biggest one for me is answering my phone. Cause oh, I don't, that's huge. Yeah. yeah. I don't know about you, but I get <laughs> tons of phone calls to the point that my friends uh, my buddy Billy, if he's listening, will tell you, he's like, you never answer your phone, man. You never answer your phone. And I'm like, dude, I'm not trying to ignore you. Like I, I value you as yeah, a friend. I'm just way. being a piece of crap right now because I'm so busy. I get overwhelmed. Yeah. So I kind of went straight to that. Job, right. So yeah. Anytime anybody calls you, you know, if it's, <laughs> if it's a pleasure call, you're like, oh dude, now it's one I don't have to answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Well, that's the problem. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, I want to answer this call, but I'm so worn out mentally. Yeah. What do I do? So I think that would probably be the one that I would go with. But there's I got a ton of tasks. Yeah, man. I, like just thinking about it, um, you know, my my kids go to work with me sometimes and I feel like I'm always like sending them as the gopher. Like, dude, hey, grab me that screwdriver, or <laughs> run to the truck and get this or whatever. So if I could think about it and change that, man, I think I would have my son do the job and then send me as the gopher to get something out of the truck. Yeah. Be like, I kind of miss that. Yeah. Hey, that I'm waiting until my <laughs> kids are old enough. You know, they're already, uh, my kids span from 13 to seven to three. And, uh, so of course the 13 year olds there where I've got a lot of things that I can assign to him, yeah. but half the time, typical 13 year old boy, he figures out a way to do it half ass. So that <laughs> I don't ask him anymore. Yeah. Uh, he caught on to that one. And then the seven and three year old are just too young to do a lot of stuff right now. So, I'm like, I can't wait until the day that all of my kids are old enough. I can be like, all right, I need you to handle this, you to handle this. Yeah. But you got a Jeep, right? Have you had your kids hold the flashlight for you yet? They, oh, they man. that test. <laughs> so I don't even ask because I remember when I was a kid worst. getting yelled at worst because job. you're not doing it right. Yeah. And it didn't matter what I did. Yeah. I was under my dad's truck, man. He back in like 94 and I think he had like a 92 or 93 Chevy Silverado you know, dang near brand new. And we're down there changing the oil. And then he popped that nut off and the oil just poured down on his face. And he's just screaming and cussing and yelling. And I'm freaking out because yeah. I was like five or six, you know. So I'm running in the house to get mom. It was just that typical story you see on that Facebook yeah. meme of, yeah, you don't know torture and pain until you hold the flashlight for your dad. Yeah, that's right. I can remember holding the flashlight for my dad. And then, uh, you know, I'd be daydreaming over there about something and he'd nudge me or kick me or something and i'd look and i'm shining the flashlight right in his eyes like, he's like shine it on what i'm working on yeah <laughs> have you have you seen the tiktok uh viral tiktok guy be a man yeah from boston oh yeah. that dude is he's one of my favorite follows on tiktok and he had one that he released recently and and that's what it said is like can't fix something chunk a wrench across the room and scream obscenities be a man yeah <laughs> <laughs> i was like that's so true like yeah his accent yeah. makes that whole it does too. It, awesome. yeah if you had and i love texas and i love yeah. southern accents i have one but if it was me you know yeah it just wouldn't make sense but, yeah i like the smart assery that goes along with oh that my kind God. of new england accent <laughs> yeah but he's he's 100 percent correct man that's yeah. that's how i am and that's why I, I try to limit what i do around the house because i'm capable and i have the tools i don't have the patience 
Yeah. So when something goes wrong, I'm the guy that chunks a wrench, grabs the the beer out of the fridge, and then I'm sitting on the couch for the rest of the day, and now I'm in a pissy mood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's about right. Well, uh, great conversation, but of course, the reason we're here, man, tell us about Anthony, where you came from, and kind of how you got into doing what you do. Yeah, man. So um, I was born in North Texas, uh, raised in McKinney, and then went to high school in a, a small town called Van Alstine. Um you know, it was about 2,500 people, a uh, pretty small town. Um, just my dad had different companies. I was always worked for family doing uh, different types of construction. So, you know, concrete work or fences or selling fence material, uh, remodeling houses, stuff like that. And uh, graduating high school, just I didn't know what I wanted to do. You know, I knew I didn't wasn't ready for college and um, uh, you know, didn't really want to start a career at the time. So I thought, man, I'll hit the pause button, go in the Air Force for a little while and uh, and then, you know, try to figure it out from there. Um, I originally wanted to be a fighter pilot in the Air Force and went down and talked to a recruiter, which was awesome because he told me the truth the entire time. Didn't <laughs> uh, didn't make anything up at all. Yeah, that's uh, usually how I remember those conversations. Yeah, that's really. exactly right. So I followed his advice and uh, instead of going to the Air Force Academy, um, I went in and enlisted because that's apparently the fastest way to become a fighter pilot. Um, it turns out it all worked out. You know, I, I joined, uh, joined the Air Force under an intelligence contract and uh, met some great people. Um, one, of the, one of the guys, Nick Sutley, uh, we met at our tech school. Um, we became best friends and he's actually the one that contacted me. We started a fly through it group together uh, 15 years later. So, uh, didn't know that at the time, but we were just kind of raging around being idiots and, uh, got stationed together in Alaska. Um, so we raged around in Alaska doing dumb stuff. I, I know you have a Jeep. Um, mm -hmm. we both got Jeeps and we'd, you know, be seen around Anchorage, like pushing each other out in the middle of an intersection, you know, in the ice <laughs> with our Jeeps, <laughs> just, just being complete morons. Um, so Went through that phase, uh, got stationed in Georgia, uh, was lucky enough to be the intel guy at a, at a pararescue unit and uh, really fell in love with what those guys do. Um, it, you know, it's a career where you have a problem and you don't have to follow um, the book on what the answer is. You know, your, your tactics techniques and procedures is a toolbox, you know, so you get this problem and you get to look in your toolbox of how am I going to solve this problem? And that's what, um, that's what drew me to that. So I got in shape, um, did a deployment to Afghanistan with those guys. Uh, we did some pretty, um, quite a bit of missions over there. So, uh, in a little over four months, it was, you know, 600 missions, picked up 700 injured people off the battlefield. Um, and then, yeah, I just fell in love. I was training over there, trying to get in shape to to go through the the pipeline, um, and came back and got the opportunity. So I jumped on it. So uh, I retrained to pararescue. Um, went to uh, out to Davis Mothin Air Force Base. Um, was a PJ there for a couple of years. Did a deployment to Afghanistan as a PJ, and obviously the war had kind of dried up. So uh, we sat around on alert. Did a lot of cool training. You know, flew some. Uh, airborne alert missions. And then, um, you know, we had, we had one real world mission that was, I mean, it was fun. It was cool to do, but, but not really what you're looking for as a PJ. You were in a dog fight, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You weren't like getting in a gunfight or, or, uh, you know, saving the damsel in distress like you wanted right. to. So, um, still probably the coolest freaking job in the world, even when you half ass go out and do something. Oh man, it was awesome. And the training that you get is awesome. I mean, being, like in your mid twenties and being trusted with the type of equipment, jumping out of an airplane at night with 20,000 feet with night vision and oxygen, a weapon and, you know, flying through the desert is, is just, uh, you know, it's, it's, you, it doesn't seem real. You yeah. Know? It's like, I can't believe that I'm here getting to do this. I think stuff. most of us have probably only seen it in movies and on documentaries and yeah. that kind of thing. It's not something that the average Joe can relate to. Yeah, exactly. And, and you kind of realize that while you're sitting there in the airplane, you're like, this sucks, man. This is awful. <laughs> <laughs> but then, uh, the ramp and door open, you stand up and, uh, 
you know, you're, you're standing on the edge of a ramp, just looking out into darkness. You turn around, all your green eyed buddies are standing behind you and you're like, we're doing this shit, dude. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So that was great, man. Um, it was the best, you know, to, to quote, uh, uh, Brad Pitt and, uh, Fury, you know, it's the best job I ever had. Yeah. We used to say that all the time and it's true, but, uh, was married and had young kids and the, the sheen kind of wore off being gone nine months a year kind of wore off I, I came back from a deployment and uh my son asked me if i could spend the night no. the first night i was home you know God. so yeah it broke my heart um and you know it, it just things change and uh so i had a unique opportunity with my wife um her aunt and uncle run a pool company um in houston and he talked to me for years about, dude, you need to get out. I'll teach you the business. I'll sell you the business. And um, I said, you know, I wasn't ready. Like I'm having fun. I'm raging around. Uh, and, you know, just hit that 10 year mark in the, in the Air Force. And it was like, OK, I got to do something else. Um, so that's how I ended up here in Houston. Um, her uncle, you know, really took me under his wing, showed me a bunch of stuff that, you know, about running a business, about, uh, you know, selling, talking to people, building relationships, that, that kind of stuff that, you know, I didn't really know. Mm -hmm. Um, we lived in their hangar, um, on, on an airport. Uh, we bought an airplane together, um, learned how to fly and it really changed my life. You know, it, um, the transition out of the military is difficult. You, you know, I went from being in Afghanistan, immersed in team life, and then basically two weeks later, I'm in Houston. I'm a pool boy, and <laughs> huge parallel to the job. Exactly, yeah, yeah, it's exactly the same. You know, you you have like uh, you have people looking down their nose at you, like call you son, you yeah, know, whatever. And, and I'm like, man, this is tough, right? <laughs> um, you don't have anybody. I mean, I have my wife and my kids. Don't, don't sure. get me wrong. And my wife's incredible. Like she was with me the whole time I was in the Air Force. Like never complained. Um, she's a perfect military spouse. Uh, but getting out, it's like, you know, she just was not prepared to deal with like the the technicalities that come along with with that transition. So getting to fly airplanes gave me something to focus on. It gave me something to, um, to struggle with, right. Um, uh, something to learn. And, uh, and I always wanted to provide that to other veterans, you know, at the, at the time I didn't, you know, I didn't have a, an avenue to do that. Um, but I always wanted to. So, um, you know, I, I still, I run the pool company now. That's what I do during the day. Um, my old friend, Nick Sutley contacted me kind of out of the blue. I hadn't talked to him in, you know, eight or nine years. And he says, uh, he calls me, you know, we're, we talked for a couple of weeks and he's like, dude, I want to start a nonprofit. And I was like, man, I've been trying. Like I have the idea. I just don't know how to do it. And he's like, I know how to do it. I don't have any idea. And I said, this is what I'm thinking. Let's make it happen where we can provide private pilot scholarships to veterans like and don't ask anything in return like you don't owe anything you've already given what you what you owe you know and uh and this is just a thank you like you don't need to you don't have to go fly for an airline you don't have to go do it as a job just you won't if you want to great like that's a stepping stone to get it done but yeah. um but if you just want to fly and have fun you just want to take your family on a vacation or you know or or find a new thing to achieve like that's what we that's what we want to provide so we got together uh nick came up with the name fly through it group uh, i came up with some other names that uh weren't as good <laughs> <laughs> it just you know it's it's fly through it it's a difficult situation you know yeah and there's so, a lot of ways that it can work exactly yeah. yeah yeah that's why uh you know nick's nick's smart and then i'm the hammer <laughs> two heads are better than one man yeah i think it's more than just a cliche saying of um you know of sorts it's teamwork really does go a long way because exactly really like you said i have the vision i don't have 
the the list of things to do to get it done. And then you have another guy that says, I kind of have the vision and some guidance for you, but I know how to get it done. Like, that's perfect. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what we had. And then, uh, you know, we were able to bring in two other guys, um, Matt and Mike, and they just made that even better. I mean, they're, they, we all see things through a different lens, you know, and we all have a little bit different background. It's kind of funny. We all have our day jobs that, that pay the bills, but our passion is really FTI group. You know, Mm -hmm. it's, it's what we, what we want to do. What we look forward to is our, you know, our, our weekly, uh, conference call where we get together and, um, okay, what has everybody done and what are we going to do this week coming up? What, how are we going to, you know, keep pushing this and ride this momentum that we have going? Um, and that's what we've done. And, uh, we're, we're, you know, we got all of our paperwork done a, a couple of months ago. Um, we're legitimate, uh, C Corp and 501 C three. Um, we have our first candidate who's a, a, a American hero and, I'm, I'm not going to share his name on here. If, if you want to see who it is, you can go check out our, our Instagram page. Um, but the dude is like just, you know, top tier American hero. And, um, you know, we're just, we're so blessed to have, you know, an awesome, humble, uh, guy that has that pedigree to, to want to join us. And, um, you know, we're gonna get him his, his pilot license and, uh, and, you know, just say thank you for all the stuff that he's, that he's given to our country. Right. And yeah. It's huge. He was, uh, um, one of the guys that was on the team and during the bin Laden raid. So, uh, he's been there, you know, he's, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah he stood in the void for us and, and we, we can't be happy enough to, to spend the time to give back to him. Yeah. That's killer. I, I mean, I think, you know, obviously I, I'd never enlisted. I'm not a veteran or anything. Um, but I think there's a lot of parallels to first response, you Absolutely. know, and being a first responder. I mean, we're a paramilitary, paramilitary, I can speak today, organization, yeah. um, you know, so there's a lot of, of things that are very similar. And I think one of the biggest thing for first responders and military is being task oriented and motivated by, um, it, and not to say we're dogs, you know, sometimes we are, but, you know, it's kind of like dog breeds, like, um, yeah. I mean, German shepherds or any of the working dogs, you know, to where they want to have a task to complete. And I think, honestly, I find with myself included that I'm the most stressed when I have absolutely nothing to do and no expectations. I get motivated whenever I have 500 things to do and not enough time to do it. And so I can definitely see where something like this would give them something to look forward to and something another task to accomplish, you know, another, another job to get done, if you will. Yeah. Uh, And like you said, man, I love the fact that after they're done with it, they can make money from it or they can just enjoy it as a hobby. That's killer. Yeah. The other thing that we're doing is, um, you know, we're trying to build a community. So, uh, we have plans for, you know, big fundraiser. Um, we're trying to set up for the first weekend in November, uh, if, if that works out, but also just, you know, getting together, um, flying, to a location together and everybody meeting up and, and camping and spending time together. And, you know, as, as, uh, veterans and first responders do it as well, I spend yeah. a little bit of time in the fire department, just, you know, just sitting around, just trash talking each other and laughing. And, you know, it's, it's, that's the, that's the stuff that makes the world go round. I couldn't agree more, man. Uh, definitely. I love, I love the premise behind it. So how are you going to select? I mean, I'm sure obviously there were probably something special with as far as this first candidate goes and stuff, but what's yeah, generally going to be your process on that? Yeah. So, um, you know, obviously the funding is a big thing. So we, we made a pact that we don't want to get ever, uh, have a, a candidate accepted into the program and not have the funding available for him to finish. You know, that, that would be the exact opposite of what mm-hmm. we're trying to do, you know, to say, Hey, we're here for me. We're here for you. Uh, but actually we're not. So goodbye. <laughs> please hold, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, as soon as we get, uh, the, the funding available to, to have a candidate go all the way through the program, um, we, you know, we'll, we'll put that out through our website and social media. There's a, there's a way that, um, anybody can contact us through there. And then, you know, it's basically like, Hey, tell us about yourself. Um, tell us what aviation means to you. Um, obviously the, the, our first candidate, 
you know, he's a he's kind of a high profile guy um, as far as veterans are concerned. Um, but that's not what our goal is. You know, sure. it, it works out perfectly. The guy happens to live 10 minutes from my house. Yeah. Um, and then he has a, you know, a big, a big following. So um, it's perfect for us because that's going to just you know, it, uh, amplify our reach. Right. So it, that makes sense for a first guy, but did we want the, the air force finance guy? We want the, um, you know, the 11 Bravo, we want the, the seal or the bosun's mate or whoever. Um, if, if aviation is, is your passion, if it's something that truly you think is going to improve your life, we want to talk to you. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of these veterans programs, it's like, oh, well, that'd be cool. You know, I'll, I'll go do that because that would be cool. You know, we're going to be able to 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 weed that person out of the program because it takes it takes a lot of time. Um, just getting through ground school is, is a, a significant um, achievement, you know, and uh, it's a it's a time commitment. And so if it's something like, you know, oh, I'd like to do this today. Uh, yeah. You know, they're, it's they're not probably going to proceed through the program, but. Um, you know, changing somebody's life, giving them uh, the gift of aviation, we say that's that's our goal. So are y'all instructors? No. We, so I'll tell you a little bit about how the program is going to work. Um, so once we have the funds, um, we select a candidate, we will set up an online ground school for them to complete. Um, ideally, you know, they'll thrive in the, you know, the online environment, uh, you know, with, with our, <laughs> yeah. uh, our age, everything's tech technology based. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and, you know, we can, we can change that. If somebody's like, oh, I don't, I don't learn that way. We'll figure it out. You know, that's a, that's one of the keys of our background. We'll figure it out. But, um, the average guy I think is going to really excel in an online ground school. Um, once we, they get through, uh, online ground school, we'll get their medical stuff taken care of. Um, at that point, our investment in that candidate is relatively small financial, uh, financially, um, but their time commitment is is huge, right? So if they're going to get through that portion, then we know that like this is going to happen. Um, at that point, we will uh, set up a, a contract with a flight school that's in the area of the veteran, so we can operate nationwide, and uh, and then they'll complete the flying portion. Gotcha. Uh, at that point, yeah. Um, you know, obviously we have really big goals. We want to have a facility at some point with our own, um, like kind of back country airport and some cabins and stuff like that, where guys can go and train and, um, and we'll hold our events there. But that's, you know, that's years down the road. <laughs> we, you know, sure. th we're going to make this happen. We have the right team together, you know, and, uh, and th th it's going to be phenomenal. You know, um, we just need to see how, how long it's going to take to get there, but. Yeah, it's, um, that's, that's how the program is going to operate at this point. Gotcha. Yeah. No, I mean that the first thing I thought about was project zero. I don't know if you've heard of them, but they do for veterans and first responders. They do like a lot of, um, outdoor get togethers. Just, yeah. Yeah. they're more focused on mental health. And, um, so their scholarships provide things like, you know, taking your vehicles off roading, going fishing, that kind of stuff. And, uh, when you were speaking about the, the whole team environment earlier, as I was thinking was like, what a cooler way to get together than with a bunch of other veterans who are also now pilots because of this program and you're flying instead of, you know, off-roading or what have you. Not that those things aren't interesting because obviously it's why I bought a Jeep, but right, yeah. uh, that's a pretty killer thing to get to do. Yeah. You know, like I said, it, it, it changed my life, but another thing about aviation is it's, there's so many aspects to aviation. I mean, if you want to go be a commercial pilot, like this is your first step, right? Um, if you don't want to be a commercial pilot, maybe your uh, passion for aviation is I want to go fast, you know? Yeah. Like, cool, man, you can do that. Like you can get your private pilot license and you can go 300 miles an hour if you want to. That's awesome. You know, if you want to do backcountry flying, uh, you know, some of the, the big wheel, uh, stole stuff is popular right now. That's kind of my passion for aviation is, uh, is the bush plane stuff, which, um, I'm, I'm learning, you know, I'm getting, getting better at it. Um, kind of anybody seen my Instagram, you've seen, I've bounced a couple landings here recently, <laughs> but, uh, but I'm getting better, you know, and, uh, and it's challenging. You're, you're never going to reach the pinnacle of aviation. So 
it's just a mountain that you can keep on climbing. You making uh, TikTok videos and reels and stuff of the Man, you're doing? Just Instagram at the moment. Yeah. Um, I had a, a, a YouTube channel for a little while, but uh, I was just kind of embarrassing myself with my video skills. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I got I, I kind of stopped doing that. But um, I mean, I can't say I'd be much better, but, you know, for a free flight, I would definitely take video of the whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> dude, you need to come out and fly. Yeah. Anytime, man. I'm Aviation's there, been I'm a passion of mine. That's yeah. one thing I want to do is get my license. Dude, but you, you should do it. It's expensive. It's and, not as and you're expensive right. as riding a Jeep. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just empty every pocket. That's you right. mean it's, it's yeah. less expensive than yeah. that? Yeah, everybody says it's expensive. You so know, what I'm, is your cost from, if you know, you know, on average? Obviously, yeah. it's going to depend on where they're located, how much the uh, flight time is going to take with an instructor, that kind of thing. But just an average ballpark figure of your organization putting someone through this start to finish. Yeah. So, um, you know, obviously a lot of things have changed with fuel prices recently. That's a big driving factor in aviation. Um, but, you know, a couple of years ago, you could do the whole thing for about $6,500. Um, with us doing the ground school and doing the medical stuff on our own, um, you know, even with the, the you know, gas prices tripling, for uh for av gas uh i, I still we're, we're estimating that it's going to cost about seven thousand seventy five hundred dollars uh to put a guy through all okay. of the flying portion and that's you know that's given that the person ex, uh, excels at a, at a normal rate right um and no you know no big issues no huge breaks between flights i mean you, you need to be able to fly twice a week basically to get through in a reasonable time um, and then, you know, the minimum that the FAA requires is 40 hours in those 40 hours. There's a lot of different requirements and, uh, and milestones that you have to hit. Um, but you know, you're, you're constantly learning, you're constantly getting better. And, and every time you get in the airplane, you need to have a goal, you know, you need to have a checklist of, of these are the things I'm going to accomplish today. And then, um, you know, you, you beat those. And then the trick is the the time between shutting the engine down and starting it again that you don't lose any of that right because you don't you don't want to be going back and and having to learn or or you know complete the same task again because you lost your touch and it's really easy to do so that's why it's important to not have huge breaks in between your flights exactly so you're constantly yeah, yeah. yeah that's like you're a firefighter learn. right so um you imagine if you didn't uh you know, jock up in your bunker gear or do a turnout drill and right in a month if you were doing it every day and then you didn't do it for a month like your time's gonna you're gonna lose suffer, some of right? that yeah yeah you know i like to say you, you teach your hands how to do it so when you first start flying it's like when you first started driving you know you're when you first start driving you're like okay i gotta put my foot on the brake and i gotta put it in gear clutch if you remember what those are <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know and, and turn signaling and all that stuff um if you know if you don't live in houston you probably do use a blinker yeah uh, <laughs> yeah most of the houston listeners right now are like turn signal what's that yeah yeah what is that is, is, <laughs> is that the finger <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No <laughs> um but you know you, you you get you get used to it and then the the you know your, your hands learn how to do it right so you're you know i need throttle and you you just think it and it happens right and then the trick is don't get complacent about it right like i don't I, you need to pick up your checklist you need to look at those things because you miss something and it could be you know oh yeah could affect the rest of your life which may only be a couple of seconds right yeah. <laughs> so for that next couple of seconds you're yeah. really going to question everything you didn't do today and then yeah yeah you're done no it's definitely um definitely a little different than driving a car as far as you know you forget to to check your oil and you might ruin a car, but it doesn't oh, yeah. mean that you're going to lose your life over it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of other things, you know, that non pilots probably don't think about. Like, um, you do check your oil, you leave the oil cap off the negative pressure that occurs inside the engine cowling will suck the oil out of the engine. Mm. Right. Yeah. That's not good. Right. The same thing with fuel caps. You know, if you don't, if you don't check your fuel cap and your fuel caps not on right, that negative pressure going over the top of the wing, suck that gas out. And, uh, you know, they say only trust a, a fuel gauge when it says empty. Yeah. And that's right, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, you so know, you're saying there's no gas in the air is a bad thing. Yeah. Typically that's not good. 
Um, it's something you can take care of with a with an airplane, hopefully, you know, depending on where you're flying at. Um, but yeah, it's not something you want to probably experience on purpose. <laughs> yeah. So are you imagining there'll be um, some sort of like application process in the Absolutely. near future? Yep. Yep. So um, again, it's it's the the, the funding that we're we're looking for Absolutely. right now. So we um, need ten thousand dollar donations from every large company. Yeah. In yeah. If you yeah. got some money laying around, you know, and you don't know what to do with it, kick it our way. But I assume we'll you'll take a five dollar donation too. Anything, man. Yeah. Anything or uh, a high five, dude. We'll take that too. Right. We'll take a, a a like or share on on social media. That I've everything said helps. it. I've said it yeah. so many times on this podcast, and normally it has to do with. Um, it costs you zero dollars to support your friend's business by liking, sharing and all that thing. But the yeah. thing is, like you said, with high fives, I don't think people understand how um, demotivating it is to run a nonprofit. Because when you're doing stuff where you want to help people, but you need money and the traction is slow or there's not a lot of money coming in because you're just now getting started and getting off the ground, it's pretty, you know, demotivating to see like, all right, cool. Well, we've got 10 people who are interested and I barely have funding for one. Yeah. You know, and it's like, how do you push through that? And I think sometimes 501 C threes need that pat on the back of, Hey, you're doing a badass job. Like what you're doing matters, you know, cause you know it deep in your heart. It's your passion, the way you're speaking about it. That's obvious, but it's still, there's times I know in the middle of the night where you're like, damn, how are we not to the point where I have 10 instructors in yeah. house and a fun factory of a hangar out in the country and all these people coming to us. Like I want to get there and it's got to be a hard thing to see and just know it feels so far away, even though you may be closer than you think. Yeah, that's absolutely right, man. Um, I will say that since we've put this team together that we have right now, um, you know, it's only four of us, but uh, man, things have been just turning and burning. Like things have been going great. The, the community that um, has has come together um, to start donating to to what we're doing. It's been awesome. Like it's it. My heart is so full right yeah. now because of the people that they they understand. You know, like my my granddad was in Vietnam, and when he came home, you know, he was treated pretty poorly. Totally you know? different. Yeah, spit on and stuff. And uh, and we're just we're so blessed these days that um, you know, re- regardless of of what you think about the war, like people respect the veterans and, you know, and, and want to, you know, want to give back, give back to them. Um, and it's, it, it just really is heartwarming. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and another thing is like, everybody's been so positive. Like even if they, somebody doesn't have the means to help us out, just the, the positive comments, like, yeah, I think that's great. Or, Hey, I know this person that can help you guys out. Yeah. You know, I've, I've only had one person say, oh, this is stupid. You know, I can't believe somebody <laughs> would. Yeah. Well, they're like somebody, you know, you can already do this through the VA, right? Oh, through okay. your, your GI bill. And, uh, and that's partially true. Um, you can, as a veteran, if, you know, if you set your GI bill up, right, you can get out of the military and you can get your private pilot license. The kicker with that is, there's, there's two ways to do that. Um, both of them end up with a commercial pilot rating, which not everybody wants to get. I understand that. Um, the, the most common way is to go to a four-year degree program um, and then do a concurrent flight training program where you go through from private through your commercial rating. Uh, you know, I got out after 10 years. I had a wife and kids, and I've got to support them. I, I don't have the time to to go to college and, uh, and then fly also. Um, yeah. and then if you don't complete all the way through, uh, your commercial rating, the VA has the right to come back after all that money. Right. Um, that, you know, that could take years, four years. You don't know where you're going to be in four years. Maybe right. things change. Um, the other way is you pay out of pocket for your private pilot license, and then you can go to one of these small flight schools, maybe close to where you live and the VA will pay for the rest. And that's the void that we fill, right? Like, um, if you want to fly for fun, we got you. If you want to fly commercially, we'll give you that private pilot license and then you can use your VA benefits to go the rest of the way through, you know, through the finish line. Um, right now there's a huge pilot shortage. So, uh, there's really never been a better time to want to, to be a pilot. Right. Um, 
you, you can start out making some good money, which a lot of people don't know. Like when I was coming oh, up, yeah. you, you go through, spend one hundred fifty, hundred eighty thousand dollars $180,000 on your, your flight training. And then, uh, you get hired. Let's say you get hired at one of these, you know, big airliners, you, you make 13, $15,000 a year for the first two or three years. That's, you, that's a big commitment, you know, yeah. and that's if you get hired and that's if you survive and there's no shortage or no, uh, uh, cutbacks or anything like that. It's, um, you know, the people that do it, they, they pay the price and they're, um, they're, you know, they're living well these days, but, um, it's a gamble for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I think we're in a, a renaissance for labor again right now. Yeah. I think COVID had a lot to do with it. And then, um, I think part of it, just people realizing during COVID, like, Hey, you know what? I don't want to sling groceries at the store anymore or, yeah. you know, work at a convenience store anymore or do what I'm doing. I do want to be happier. Yeah. You know, not only did we see that life is extremely short sometimes, but we also saw that as far as employers go, man, they're not going to be around forever. All of them and uh, certain conditions in the economy can shut a company down real quick. And those jobs like airline pilots, firefighters, police officers, um, all that stuff that's going to be around regardless, I think yeah. probably became a little more interesting to some people. And then on top of that, you've got the trades and stuff that are just taking off right now, where if you don't have those specialty certifications, licenses, you can't do the job. And so many people with, you know, huge hundred thousand dollar degrees are realizing like, man, this, this kid graduated high school at 18, went to a trade school and then 21 came out with, you know, $10,000 worth of debt at a trade school. And he's making a hundred K a year plus starting. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like welders are big. Like that's yeah. a quintessential thing, right? Like you could be a pipeline welder. You can really kill it. Um, oh yeah. A lot better than you know, maybe you have a political science degree. <laughs> whatever. And they have a lot of scholarships for welding yeah. and stuff too. Yeah. In our area. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm a, I'm a redneck blue collar guy, you know, yep. that's what I do all day. Um, and, and that, that fits me, you know, I'm an outside dog. <laughs> so I hear you. I, I like, I like it that way. Um, not everybody does. I get it. Uh, it's hard for us to find, um, you know, good work, good workers these days. Uh, not everybody wants to do it. Right. But that's cool. But, um, you know, there's lots of good jobs out there that are just sitting vacant because there's nobody to go do it. And there's, there's good money. There's a, uh, you know, decent hours and, uh, you know, and, and so a lot of people say, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. Right. I think a lot of people can achieve that for me. I don't want that. Right. Like I don't want to have the thing that I love. What, I have to wake up every single day and go do that thing that to makes make a sense. living, right? Um, I want to do what is going to finance my hobbies. Right. So, you know, the pool company that, that we run now, um, that's what it does. It, it pays the bills, right? Yep. It, it puts food on the table and it allows me to go enjoy mm. the things that I like. I love flying. I love shooting. Um, I used to skydive a lot. I don't do that anymore. Um, but I, I would not like to have to wake up every single morning and go do that thing. If I don't want to go fly, I don't go fly. Right. The weather's crappy or it's going to be miserable. I don't do it. If it's beautiful outside, not anything else going on. Yeah. Dude, I'll get up and just tear it up. Maybe I'll fly six hours in a day, you know, just cause I'm, that's what I want to do. Yep. They, we talked about that on another one of our podcasts that we have here hosted by Video John and Andrew, uh, Business Growth Hacks. I think it was one of the early on episodes where they talked about basically should you make it into a company or not. And that's one big thing I think people need to take into consideration. You know, they say, well, I love flying. I could get my commercial pilot's license, make a bunch of money doing it. But are you that type of person that you're going to get burned out on that and worn out. And instead of enjoying flying, it's going to be the job, the one yep. that pays the bills. And then now you got to find a new hobby, yep. which may work out perfectly for you, you know? Um, but you have to know if you're that type of person or not. Cause I am. Yeah. I mean, and even with something as simple as podcasting, totally fun, but every now and then there's parts of it that it's like, this is a freaking job, you yeah. know, like I can't lose sight of, Yep. I have to get this next episode ready for tomorrow, which means that there's certain work that I have to do that 
it's not all just hopping up here on a microphone talking for a little while and then the rest is done with magic. You know, there's a lot of work behind the scenes that goes into it. And luckily, I enjoy doing what I do enough that even the monotonous sides of things is still fun. Yeah. You know, you still have one of the best jobs in the world. So nothing. Yeah, I was blown that. away walking in here at, at, you know, everything that goes in to this. You know, I, I've never been on a podcast before. I didn't know what to expect. <laughs> but, uh, dude, this is, uh, yeah, you guys are doing something awesome up here. It's a lot it of fun, really man. Cool. We really enjoy it. And honestly, the best part of it, and again, I know I'm going to risk sounding cliche here, but it's meeting cool people like you with really cool stories and getting those out there because who doesn't want to support a, a group that's trying to support veterans and get them something as cool as a pilot's license. But now that you know the story behind it and the people behind it, I think it's extremely important. What's the name of your, just to pivot here, what's the name of your pool company? Uh, our pool company is Southern pool service. Okay. Um, we do, um, you know, mainly commercial, uh, maintenance repair uh, in the west houston area so our niche market is uh hoa pools oh so okay. glorified yeah. backyard pools we do everything my hoa um, needs a new pool company <laughs> yeah well let me know man <laughs> yeah <laughs> we, we work all over the place and uh we've been around uh almost 45 years next year i think it's 45 years um my wife's uncle started the business and uh incredible guy unfortunately he passed away about 18 months oh, ago yeah uh, a bad deal um he was you know he's just the most incredible man uh super honest um get would give his you know shirt off his back for anybody uh and you know just he provided me this opportunity um, got me involved in aviation you know he took care of of me and my wife i, I say he rescued me from the air force you know i feel yeah. kind of like a, a puppy sometimes uh at not knowing what the hell i'm doing <laughs> yeah but uh you know and, and there were times when you know we live down here we don't have any family locally and uh you know he'd be like i'm gonna watch the kids y'all go out and we're like no you don't have to do that yep. he's like i know i don't have to i want to yep and uh you know he unfortunately was uh, diagnosed with a brain tumor and we lost him <sighs> shortly thereafter. But, uh, you know, I, I just, I look up to that man so much and, uh, and I, I think he'd be, he'd be proud of the, the nonprofit. I, um, I know that, uh, you know, he's looking down on us, just, just big smile on his face, yeah. maybe a tear in his eye. Cause that's kind of, kind of man that he was. And, uh, and I know that, um, you know, he's going to help us out and get this thing, get this thing going. Heck yeah. Um, but his, uh, his wife is my wife's aunt, obviously. And, um, she exactly the same, man, just a incredible, incredible woman. Um, they live out in the hill country in Texas and, uh, and we go out and spend some time with them occasionally. Um, but just, you know, just, just great American yeah. family, you know, just incredible. We, we just had uh, a podcast guest actually the day we record today of this one uh, that guest released just love coffee. And that's exactly kind of what she said was the legacy she wanted to leave behind for her kids. Wasn't money. She was like, I'm going to spend every dime I have. Yeah. I'm going to go have fun, travel, enjoy the world, but I want to leave them each with their own cafe that they own and they can run, they can sell, they can do whatever they want to do to make money off of that business. I'm going to give them the means, but yeah. not the money. Yeah, that's right. Uh, his, his name is Dalton, and he used to say uh, his last check was going to bounce. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's a multimillionaire, but uh, yeah, he's like, I'm going to spend it all. I said, man, you earned it, dude. Spend it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's really cool to give somebody. I mean, it goes back to the old, uh, you know, you can give a man a fish, feed him for a day, teach a man to fish obviously giving you a business is more valuable than if he just wrote you a million dollar check because yeah, right. what you do with that million dollars, yeah, you could potentially turn it into more money, but when he gives you a company, that's one that you can take multiple million dollar checks out of if you do it right. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and he, what he taught me was always tell the truth, always answer the phone. Right. Um, and be where you say you're going to be when you say you're going to be there. And he lived that way. And, you know, it's easy to say it's a lot more difficult to live that way. Oh, yeah. That's um, why I need that assistant we talked about at the beginning of the show <laughs> yeah. to always answer my phone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so he, uh, you know, he, he, he lived that way. And, uh, 
and that's how I'm going to live, you know, and that's how, that's how I'm going to run his business in a way that, that makes him proud. Um, if for some reason the business failed, like I have those tools now that I'm, I'm, we're going to be successful. Sure. I'm going to, you know, my, my goal is to allow my, my two sons to get further in life than I am. Right. As it should be as a yeah. parent. Yeah. Yeah. If they don't surpass where I am in life, then I failed them. Sure. You know, um, they're, they're the, the end, the end goal. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I kind of wish that I would, I wouldn't give my military service up for anything. Um, it's, you know, it's not, it's not who I am, but it's a part of who I am. Um, but I wish I, I, would have been there more in uh you know from their one to five year old range um because my wife did an incredible job right but you know you just you miss so much and you don't get to go back and have those again it's a fast five years it sure is like yeah. it, it just goes by so fast and then every single day there's so many changes yeah yeah i, I deployed um my son was born i think he was like three months old and and i deployed and I was so scared when I came home. I'm like, he's not going to remember who I am. Right. You know? And I, I walked in the door and uh, at, to our squadron. My wife was was there with him. And uh, as soon as I walked in, man, he like leans over to to for me to hold him. And dude, I, I broke down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Being a parent, like, I just know it, man. All of us, we all start out with like, oh, we're crazy. We have no worries in the world. We're tough. Nothing makes us cry. And then you become a parent and I'm like, every single day, I'm like, man, I'm a ball bag now. Yeah. Like, why am I like this? <laughs> yeah. Nothing used to affect me at all. And now everything does. Yeah. My wife makes fun of me. I'm like, shut up. I'm not crying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the guy that, um, that we're, we're starting with our, our first candidate, he, uh, he's going to have a baby any day now. Um, his wife's actually, I think like eight days past due oh wow so he's like yeah, literally happening yeah i'm sure he's sleeping with one eye open you know <laughs> and uh i said dude are you ready and he's like i'm so ready and I, that's why i told him i said you that first two seconds that you get your hands on your new baby boy yep. you're gonna realize how much you can love something yeah you know and that's it's crazy you know like how that void in your heart that you didn't even know was there mm -hmm. is there and filled like that you know yep it's uh it's it is crazy yeah so as far as we'll start with the 501c3 um mm -hmm. where can we support you like and share your content keep up with these updates forward it to people that we think need to be candidates and you know how, how do we get you the money you're wanting yeah absolutely so um we're on instagram it's uh fti.group on Instagram. Um, you'll see my ugly mug on there, uh, doing some goofy stuff in airplanes. Um, there you, you can, uh, you know, follow us and see, see what we got going on at that point. Uh, our website is fly through it group.com. There's a Avenue on there, uh, to get in touch with us and, um, and we can set you up with, uh, with how to give man, anything helps, you know, it's a, it's maybe you might think it's a drop in the bucket, but, um, we don't have a whole lot of drops in our bucket at the moment, but, uh, regardless, you know, it's, it's four of us right now, um, that are funding this whole thing. And if it's four of us funding it for the, for the rest of eternity, man, that's the way that it is. It's going to happen. Yeah. Um, we, we have had, a, a our first sponsor came in. Um, it's a, a company called Osprey flight solutions. Um, they came in big time to help out. Um, if you want to go check them out, uh, you can Google Google them. But that's that's a really cool um, flight safety organization. Um, they kind of do threat analysis for aircraft all over the world, which is is really cool. Um, good good group of people out there. Um, and then you know a local building company, uh, Gatlin Building Co. Uh, they came in also to help us out. Um, he builds, you know, metal buildings, uh, pole barns, um, concrete work, uh, nationwide, uh, mainly focused around Texas, but, um, we'll travel, right? Yeah. Uh, so those, those two businesses have come in, uh, to support us and, you know, it's, it, it's awesome. It, it feels 
like we're validated, you know, like the proof of concept works. Um, yeah. So if you want to check us out, uh, everybody uses Instagram. So we're on Instagram there. And then uh, the website's up. Uh, you see, you know, some pictures. We got a forum where you can start uh, chatting with people. Um, that's where we're going to have the, uh, the application process where you can, you know, submit. Um, and then we can, you know, meet up and have some conversations. Um, but yeah. Okay. That's it. Man. On the event, the fundraising event y'all are going to have, do you have a date set ideas for all that stuff or is it just kind of an, yeah, in that idea phase? It's tentative right now. Okay. Um, <laughs> we've never set up an event to the, the size that we want to want to have, but, um, we have a location, um, which is going to be at a, a big airport here in Houston, a big, uh, big hangar. And then, um, uh, we're looking at November 5th and that's going to be kind of open to anybody that wants to be there. Okay. Um, we did have a, a gentleman out on the East coast donated an airplane to us. It's a, it's a kit that's mostly built, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's a, it's valued about $55,000 the way wow. it sits. So, um, uh, yeah, great dude. Uh, big Bob was a Marine that started building it. Um, he unfortunately passed away and, and left it to this, this gentleman, uh, Timothy and, uh, Tim reached out and said, Hey, you know, like, I think this can help you guys. Um, I said, you know, absolutely. It can help us a little bit. Uh, yeah. So, uh, we're going to drive out there next weekend, drive to Pennsylvania and pick this thing up and bring it back. And then that's going to be, you know, our first project. So we're going to, you know, YouTube putting this airplane together and, uh, and then raffle it off. So somebody's going to. Somebody's going to win themselves wow. like a hundred and fifty thousand dollar airplane. That's yeah. killer. Yeah, what a prize. So man, it's a, uh, it's gonna, it's gonna be a, a little bit of a road, dude. But um, every single day, it's just, it feels good to be working toward that goal of giving, giving back. Sure. So, so your pool company, I know this Southern was pool obviously yeah. mostly about fly through it and, yeah, and the nonprofit stuff, but. We're here for all those businesses. So how do we support that business? If I need to get you in contact with my HOA, how do I make that happen? Yeah. So, um, you know, we work with a lot of the big management companies around Houston. Yeah. Our website for the pool company is southernpools.net. Um, dot net. A lot of people forget yeah. the dot net. Those still exist. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like I said, we're 44 years old, so we have a dot net. And then um, uh, you can feel free to email me. It's anthony at southernpools.net dot net got it so uh yeah man uh we'd love to have all the properties that we can we've been around a long time and uh you know we do a good good job for a good price that's our that's our goal sounds good man i i mean i think i could probably make this into a three or four hour episode with all Let's the keep questions going, I, dude. Have I got some water and, uh, <laughs> but our listeners you know we're at like probably 50 minutes or so something like that i, I think it's a good place to start wrapping up um, so I just, I can't thank you enough for being on the show. I mean, this is a really cool story. Um, it's totally unique from all the other 501 C threes we've had on the show. It's something I think our listeners absolutely need to support. And, uh, I hope that they will. I know I'll personally support it along with Andrew, um, you know, your fundraiser, stuff like that, man, we've got a photo booth. We've got a DJ set up. Oh, that'd be killer. Um, I want to be yeah. there. Yeah. I want to be a part of this and, and help support that. We do it for a lot of nonprofits. So definitely hit us up on that, but thank you for coming on the show. I mean, we got personal, you shared some personal stuff with us. <laughs> you shared some business stuff with us. We really do appreciate that. Man, and I can't thank do. you enough. This is a, uh, this has been really a great experience for me and, and I appreciate uh, you taking the time to spend with me. Absolutely, man. Well, listeners, thank you for tuning in to another episode of the beef podcast. Thank you for coming back every single week to support nonprofits and companies alike, just like Anthony that we had on the show here. Please continue to tune into these shows. Make sure that you follow them everywhere. If you need to see their Instagram, you need a, a quick link to it down below in all of the information that we post along with our episodes every single week, no matter where you listen, we've always got links down below all of that stuff. You can click right on it and find everything you need to support them. Even if it's just a high five, even if it's a like a share or showing up to the fundraiser and busting out a check for $10,000. So we hope to see you out there. I hope to see you next week for another episode of the beef. And as always stay beefy, my friends. 
You've been listening to The Beef. Thanks for listening. Make sure to like, rate, and review. We hope you've gotten some useful and practical information that you can use. And we'll be back soon. But in the